Delano found King Elicar in his palace sitting room. Delano nodded once more to the guards outside, then closed the door. They seemed troubled, as well they should. His orders had been irregular. But they would do as told. They wore the king's colors, blue and gold, but they were Dalinar's men, chosen specifically for their loyalty. The king was staring at one of his maps, wearing his shard plate. Ah, uncle, good. I'd wanted to speak with you. Do you know of these rumors about you and my mother? I realize that nothing untoward could be happening, but I do worry about what people think. Dalinar crossed the room. Infused diamonds hung in the corners of the room, and the carved walls had been set with tiny chips of quartz to sparkle and reflect the light. Honestly, Uncle, I'm growing very intolerant of your reputation in camp. What they are saying reflects poorly on me, you see, and... Dalinar stopped about a pace from him. Uncle, is everything all right? My door guards reported some kind of mishap with your plateau assault today, but my mind was full of thoughts. Did I miss anything vital? Yes. Dalinar raised his leg and kicked the king in the chest. The strength of the blow tossed the king backward against his desk. The fine wood shattered as the heavy shard bearer crashed through it. Elakar hit the floor. His breastplate cracked just faintly. Dalinar stepped up to him, then delivered another kick to the king's side, cracking the breastplate again. Guards! To me! Guards! Nobody came. Dalinar kicked again, and Elikar caught his boot. Dalinar bent down and grabbed Elikar by the arm, then yanked him to his feet, tossing him toward the side of the room. The king stumbled on the rug, crashing through a chair. Wide-eyed, Elikar scrambled to his feet. Dalinar advanced on him. What has gone wrong with you, uncle? You're mad! Guards! Assassin in the king's chamber! Guards! Elikar tried to run for the door, but Dalinar threw his shoulder against the king, tossing the younger man to the ground again. Elikar rolled, but got a hand under himself and climbed to his knees, the other hand to the side, a puff of mist appearing in it as he summoned his blade. Dalinar kicked the king's hand just as the shard blade dropped into it. The blow knocked the blade free, and it dissolved back to mist immediately. Elikar frantically swung a fist at Dalinar, but Dalinar caught it then reached down and hauled the king to his feet. He pulled Elikar forward and slammed his fist into the king's breastplate. Elikar struggled, but Dalinar repeated the move, smashing his gauntlet against the plate, cracking the steel casings around his fingers. The next blow shattered Elikar's breastplate in an explosion of molten shards. Dalinar dropped the king to the floor. Elikar struggled to rise again, but the breastplate was a focus for the shard plate's power. Missing it left arms and legs heavy. Dalinar went to one knee beside the squirming king. Elikar's shard plate formed again, but Dalinar grabbed the king's wrist and smashed it against the stone floor, knocking the blade free yet again. It vanished into mist. Guards! 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 They won't come, Elikar. They're my men. And I left them with orders not to enter, or let anyone else enter, no matter what they heard, even if that included pleas for help from you. Elikar felt silent. They are my men, Elikar. I trained them. I placed them there. They've always been loyal to me. Why, Uncle? What are you doing? Please tell me. The girth on your horse during the hunt. You cut it yourself, didn't you? Elikar's eyes grew wider. The saddles were switched before you came to my camp. You did that because you didn't want to ruin your favorite saddle when it flew free of the horse. You were planning for it to happen. You made it happen. That's why you've been so certain that the girth was cut. Someone was trying to kill me, but you wouldn't believe. I... I worried it might be you, so I decided I... I... You cut your own strap to create a visible, obvious-seeming attempt on your life. Something that would get me or Sadius to investigate. Elikar hesitated, then nodded again. (sighs) Don't you realize what you did, Elikar? You brought suspicion on me from across the camps. You gave Sadius an opportunity to destroy me. I had to know. I couldn't trust anyone. What of the cracked gemstones in your shard place? Did you place those too? No. Then maybe you did uncover something. I guess you can't be completely blamed. Then you'll let me up? No. 
Dalinar leaned down farther. He laid a hand against the king's chest. Belakar stopped struggling, looking up in terror. If I push, you die. Your ribs crack like twigs. Your heart is smashed like a grape. Nobody would blame me. They all whispered that the Blackthorn should have taken the throne for himself years ago. Your guard is loyal to me. There will be nobody to avenge you. Nobody would care. Dalinar pressed his hand down just slightly. <gasps> Do you understand? No! <sighs> Dalinar released the younger man and stood up. Your paranoia may be unfounded, or it may be well-founded. Either way, you need to understand something. I am not your enemy. So you're not going to kill me? <laughs> Storms, no. I love you like a son, boy. You have very odd paternal instincts. I spent years following you. I gave you my loyalty, my devotion, and my counsel. I swore myself to you, promising myself, vowing to myself that I would never covet Gavilar's throne, all to keep my heart loyal. Despite this, you don't trust me. You pull a stunt like that one with the girth, implicating me, giving your own enemies position against you without knowing it. Dalinar stepped toward the king. Elikar cringed. Well, now you know. If I'd wanted to kill you, Elikar, I could have done it a dozen times over. A hundred times over. It appears you won't accept loyalty and devotion as proof of my honesty. Well, if you act like a child, you get treated like one. You know now, for a fact, that I don't want you dead. For if I did, I would have crushed your chest and been done with it. Now, do you understand? Slowly, Elikar nodded. Good. Tomorrow, you're going to name me High Prince of War. What? Sadie has betrayed me today. Dalinar walked over to the broken desk, kicking at the pieces. The king's seal rolled out of its customary drawer. He picked it up. Nearly 6,000 of my men were slaughtered. Adolin and I barely survived. What? That's impossible! Oh, far from it. He saw a chance to pull out, letting the Pashendi destroy us, so he did it. A very Alethi thing to do. Ruthless, yet still allowing him to feign a sense of honor or morality. So... You expect me to bring him to trial? No. Sadius is no worse and no better than the others. Any of the High Princes would betray their fellows if they saw a chance to do it without risking themselves. I intend to find a way to unite them in more than just name. Somehow. Tomorrow, once you name me High Prince of War, I will give my plate to Renarin to fulfill a promise. I've already given away my blade to fulfill a different one. He walked closer, meeting Elikar's eyes again, then gripped the king's seal in his hand. As High Prince of War, I will enforce the codes in all ten camps. Then I'll coordinate the war effort directly, determining which armies get to go on which plateau assaults. All gem hearts will be won by the throne, then distributed as spoils by you. We'll change this from a competition to a real war, and I'll use it to turn these ten armies of ours and their leaders into real soldiers. Stormfather, they'll kill us! The High Princes will revolt! I won't last a week! Well, they won't be pleased, that's for certain. And yes, this will involve a great deal of danger. We'll have to be much more careful with our guard. If you're right, someone is already trying to kill you, so... We should be doing that anyway. You're serious, aren't you? Yes. You're going to have your scribes draw up my appointment right after I leave. But I thought you said it was wrong to force men to follow the codes. You said that the best way to change people was to live right, and then let them be influenced by your example. That was before the Almighty lied to me. Much of what I told you I learned from the way of kings, but I didn't understand something. Noadon wrote the book at the end of his life, after creating order after forcing the kingdoms to unite, after rebuilding lands that had fallen in the desolation. The book was written to embody an ideal. It was given to people who already had momentum in doing what was right. That was my mistake. Before any of this can work, our people need to have a minimum level of honor and dignity. Adolin said something to me a few weeks back. 
something profound. He asked me why I forced my sons to live up to such high expectations, but let others go about their errant ways without condemnation. I have been treating the other high princes and their light eyes like adults. An adult can take a principle and adapt it to his needs, but we're not ready for that yet. We're children, and when you're teaching a child, you require him to do what is right until he grows old enough to make his own choices. The Silver Kingdoms didn't begin as unified, glorious bastions of honor. They were trained that way, raised up like youths nurtured to maturity. He strode forward, <sighs> kneeling down beside Elokar. The king continued to rub his chest, his shard plate looking strange with the central piece missing. We are going to make something of Alethkar, nephew. The high princes gave their oaths to Gavilar, but now ignore those oaths. Well, it's time to stop letting them. We're going to win this war, and we're going to turn Alethkar into a place that men will envy again. Not because of our military prowess, but because people here are safe, and because justice reigns. We are going to do it, or you and I are going to die in the attempt. You say that with eagerness. Because I finally know exactly what to do. Dalinar stood up straight. I was trying to be Noadon the Peacemaker, but I'm not. I'm the Blackthorn, a general and a warlord. I have no talent for backroom politicking, but I am very good at training troops. Starting tomorrow, every man in each of these camps will be mine. As far as I'm concerned, they're all raw recruits, even the High Princes. Assuming I make the proclamation. Oh, you will. And in return, I promise to find out who is trying to kill you. After that announcement goes out, discovering who's trying to kill me will become easy. You can put every name in the war camps on that list. At least we won't have to guess, then. Don't be so glum, nephew. You learned something today. Your uncle doesn't want to kill you. He just wants to make me a target. For your own good, son. Don't fret too much. I've got some plans on how exactly to keep you alive. He opened the door, revealing a nervous group of guards keeping at bay a nervous group of servants and attendants. He's just fine. See? He stepped aside, letting the guards and servants in to attend their king. Dalinar turned to go, then hesitated. Oh, and Elikar, your mother and I are now courting. You want to start growing accustomed to that. Despite everything else that had happened in the last few minutes, this got a look of pure astonishment from the king. Dalinar smiled and pulled the door closed.